The next Washington Commanders head coach is probably coaching this weekend in the divisional round of the NFL playoffs, and two of them are actually going up against each other, making this weekend with plenty to watch for Washington Commanders fans. That and more coming up on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into this episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making me lock for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're getting this podcast. And you can continue this conversation by becoming a Locked On Commanders Insider. Join Locked On Commanders Insiders by going to joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders. From there, you'll get text messages from me. Inside information, exclusive content like command huddles, one of them dropping on Saturday, which I will where I will be discussing the ongoing feud between Robert Griffin, the third and Jay Gruden, among other things. Get in on all of that fun. Just go to join subtext.com slash locked on commanders and we will you can be a part of that entertaining mess. I'm David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for CommanderCountry.com, part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers and everydayers. Greatly appreciate your continued support for the show. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL, all lowercase, to get a first deposit match up to $100. On today's episode, we are expanding our list of free agent candidates from this year's playoff group as the divisional round playoffs get set to get underway. But first, it is quite possible, likely even, that the next Washington Commanders head coach is competing this weekend in one of those four games. Two of them are competing against each other in one game. So we're going to start Right there, Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald is going to be facing off against Houston Texans offensive coordinator Bobby Slowick. And, of course, Mike McDonald right up the road with the Baltimore Ravens. He has been one of the favorite names in this conversation all along. Bobby Slowick has certainly been a name to watch. And then since the hiring of Adam Peters to be the general manager, of course, Adam coming from San Francisco, Bobby Slowick also coming from San Francisco this last offseason to join D'Amico Ryans uh, with the coaching staff there in Houston. So there's the obvious connection there. Uh, And like I said, in our last rankings episode, while I'm generally not a big fan of coaches going from offensive coordinator, play caller one year to head coach the next year, if Adam Peters hires Bobby Slowick, there's a reason behind it. And I can certainly uh, put my faith and trust in Adam Peters that he knows Bobby Slow just a little bit more than I do. And I can put my one year coordinating biases aside, but this matchup is really intriguing. Uh, I'm actually gonna be driving on my way to uh, the, the Midwest. I'm going to be covering the Buccaneers playoff game in Detroit this weekend. So on Saturday, I'm actually gonna be driving uh, to Ohio to my in-laws and, and getting ready to go to Detroit from there. Uh, so I'll be listening to this game, unfortunately not watching this game, but I will have a DVR and I will watch it as soon as I get the opportunity because I'm really interested in this contest. It's really going to help us expand our look at these two coaches. So I thought we would expand our look here on Locked On Commanders at these two coaches in the meantime. Mike McDonald, right? Second year in the NFL uh, as a defensive coordinator. Spent a lot of time with the Baltimore Ravens staff. Before that was the Michigan Wolverines coordinator, defense coordinator in 2021. Came back in 2022 to coordinate the Ravens defense and now obviously we're in 2023. So second year in the NFL as a defensive coordinator. Second year in the NFL playoffs as a defensive coordinator. 2022, uh, him and the Baltimore Ravens lost the wild card, uh, lost in the wild card round to the Cincinnati Bengals 24 to 17. That 24 points that the Bengals scored was actually two points less than the Bengals averaged all season long. So pretty solid performance from the Ravens defense. They held the Bengals to the fewest first downs they've had all season long, less than 260 yards of offense for just the fifth time all season long, second fewest passing yards and rushing yards of the entire season, forced a turnover in all three contests they played against them in 2022. And the Ravens only lost by a touchdown, despite the Bengals having Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, and Lamar Jackson, Odell Beckham Jr. wasn't a Raven yet. Zay Flowers wasn't a Raven yet. Lamar Jackson was out for Baltimore. So despite the fact that the Cincinnati Bengals from a talent standpoint were obviously uh, much heavier, more, more heavily talented than the Cincinnati or than the Baltimore Ravens roster, the Ravens defense was still able to at least hold up to keep the game interesting, end up losing by a touchdown. So really not a bad performance overall. Obviously, you never want to lose. And when you're the Baltimore Ravens, you never want to lose to the Cincinnati Bengals, Pittsburgh Steelers, or the Cleveland Browns, especially in the playoffs. But from an objective standpoint, When you look at the talent that was on the field, 
Uh, and you look at the circumstances, a seven point loss, not really uh, a terrible, terrible performance. 2022 Ravens uh, in total allowed 18 points per game. This year, they're only allowing 16 points per game, and they held the Houston Texans back in their week one matchup uh, to just nine points this season. And obviously, week one to now, a lot different. Both of these teams are certainly different. The Houston Texans have certainly had the opportunity to grow. The biggest difference for the Ravens defense between now and then, or this contest rather, between now and then, is that Houston's running game only gained 72 yards in week one, third fewest against the Baltimore Ravens this season. And the usage of running back Devin Singletary was 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 low. He wasn't a known commodity to the Houston Texans at that time. Singletary had only 15 yards total offense in week one. That's the second fewest total of his season this or of his of of his season this year. Um, but he's had 60 or more all purpose yards in the last six games for the Houston Texans, including the wild card match. So Devin Singletary's role has certainly grown with the Houston Texans offense as the season has progressed. That's a new wrinkle that Mike McDonald is going to have to deal with. So keep an eye out for that. That's something that he didn't see the first time they played Houston. Keep an eye out for how Mike McDonald's defense prepares for that, reacts to that and adjusts to it. If it doesn't go well in the early goings, flipping over now to Houston Texans, offensive coordinator, Bobby Slowick, like I mentioned, first year offensive coordinator, second playoff game in his first year, they won the whole wild card game uh, last weekend against the Cleveland Browns, 356 total yards of offense against that Browns defense. That's the fifth time this season. The Browns defense has allowed 350 plus yards. That's the only the fifth time, uh, by the way, quarterback CJ Stroud, rookie quarterback, 274 passing yards in his playoff debut. Houston's second most passing yards against the Browns uh, this season, or Houston had the second most passing yards in a single game that the Browns gave up all season long. Stroud, uh, his best quarterback rating of the year came last week against Cleveland Browns. And you know, when you look at Bobby Slowick's pay, play calling, uh, they ran 17 plays to 21 passes before pulling their starters uh, for the rest of the game. Started the game with three passes, two of them short, one of them deep. Four of the first six plays were passes. Uh, four of the first six plays were passes in week one, but they were all short passes. And that's really where you see the biggest difference in the Bobby Slowick, CJ Stroud, Houston Texans offense in week one against the Baltimore Ravens. They didn't go deep until the sixth pass of the game. And they only threw six deep passes all told uh, for the entire of the game or the entirety of the game. Um, in the wild card round, the third pass of the playoff game was deep and they had seven deep passes in the first half alone against Cleveland. And Cleveland is the second best pass defense in yards per pass attempt. The Ravens are the first. So if you're going to go heavy after the second best pass defense in the NFL, you're probably going to go heavy in the first. And again, that is something that CJ Stroud, Bobby Sloak did not do in that first week. Obviously, they're still getting to know each other. CJ Stroud's rookie game or first game of his rookie season. Can't really blame Bobby for kind of bringing in the reins a little bit there. Uh, so I expect Bobby Slow to try and work some short stuff with Devin Singletary. Expect him to set up the deep ball, but don't expect the Texans to wait until the sixth pass of the game to try that Ravens secondary. On the Ravens side, three down linemen most of the time. Some two down linemen looks. Two high shells are going to make getting Singletary and tight end Dalton Schultz involved as much as you can early on. Uh, try to get them to suck up as a defense and then hit them over the top. Uh, when that extra defender falls into the box, you're going to see mostly zone coverage from Baltimore, mostly and, and mostly four man rushes. So two down linemen, you're still going to see four rushers, three down linemen, probably still going to see four rushers, which means you're going to have second level, third level defenders coming in on pass rushes. When you have four down linemen, keep an eye out because you're probably going to see one of those Ravens linemen do, uh, drop off into coverage and somebody from the second or third level come in as a rusher. So that's what you should expect in this candidate versus candidate matchup Bobby Sloak versus Mike McDonald in the divisional rounds uh, of these playoffs. But what about the players they might bring over and other potential free agents from the rest of the playoff matchups? That's coming up next on our divisional round free agency preview on Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, or all of the above, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. 
eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. This episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers, you get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The Baltimore Ravens, San Francisco 49ers, Detroit Lions, and the Buffalo Bills are all favored to win their divisional round matchups. But even if you bet on one and they don't win, you still win. You still get $150 as long as that bet on one of those teams was a $5 variety. The app is so easy to use, and there's different ways to bet, like same game parlays, find new bets in the Explore tab, and make your own parlay in the Parlay Hub, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the National Football League. Continuing on now with today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Thanks again for making Locked On Commanders your first listener, first view today and every day. Every day is make sure you come back at the beginning of the week. We have five brand new episodes coming for you next week, including another mailbag episode. So if you've got questions you need answered, by all means, drop them in the YouTube comment section or text me directly by becoming a Locked On Commanders insider. Join subtext.com slash Locked On Commanders to do that. Locked On has also launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with your local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Now we're going to get into our divisional round playoffs, free agent preview. we got some really good games coming up this weekend against teams that are still in the hunt for that all-elusive Lombardi trophy. Starting off, First game of the weekend, Houston Texans traveling to face the Baltimore Ravens, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. You can watch it on ESPN or ABC. And we're starting off with the visitors here, the Houston Texans, and we're looking at Derek Barnett, Houston Texans defensive end. uh, As a first-round NFL draft selection for the Philadelphia Eagles in 2017, Barnett spent his first six seasons with Philly before being waived during the 2023 season. He was claimed by the Houston Texans and has played uh, with them ever since. He played eight games total for Philadelphia Eagles, and then he was inactive for the final two games of the year that he was there. So I think 10 games total, he was in Philly. So the Texans claimed him, and since then, Barnett has played on 99 snaps in the regular season, but he played in 47 in the wild card matchup. So certainly an uptick in his work, health, and all those things, certainly a factor in doing that. Uh, but 47 snaps in their win, over the Cleveland Browns. He logged two tackles. He got a sack in the win. And, you know, he's someone, someone to watch this weekend in the NFL's divisional round of the playoffs. And again, this is the matchup where we've got two prime coaching candidates, Bobby Sloak for the Houston Texans, Mike McDonald for the Baltimore Ravens. If, if Derek Barnett has come into Houston, he's had a good attitude, and I can't imagine he's getting 47 snaps in a wild card round unless they're either forced to or he's been having at least some sort of a positive impact on the team. And... You know, I know Bobby's an offensive head coach, but he certainly knows what Derek Barnett is bringing to the team. He certainly knows his reputation around the building, around the organization. So this is someone who may be looking to restart his career, maybe looking for a fresh start this offseason. And if Bobby Slow goes to Washington, knows Derek Barnett, knows who he is as a player and as a person, and uh, gives him the opportunity to come to Washington and maybe get a little bit of revenge against his old team a couple times a year. That's certainly a, a pairing that I think could work out fairly well if, you know, if all those things uh, kind of align. Now, on the other side of this matchup, the Baltimore Ravens roster, uh, this is not a team that we talked about free agent wise last year or last week because they weren't playing in the wild card round. So this guy is the first time we've really talked about it. But I know some of you in the comments have already been really high on Patrick Queen, the Baltimore Ravens linebacker. And this is a guy that not only do I think he could be a home run signing for Washington, but I think he's going to be available. Uh, there was a lot of trade speculation surrounding Queen this past year, especially preseason, all those things to, that make you think he may be leaving Baltimore after this season. And that could actually be happening because it's not very it's not very common that you see a, a Pro Bowl caliber, all pro caliber type of player leave their organization. But that could be happening with Patrick Queen and the Baltimore Ravens, of course. Trade speculation is kind of what you expect, right? We saw it with Chase Young. So when you see a fifth-year option get declined, that's typically what you're going to get. That's exactly the scenario that Queen found himself in this offseason. He's a first-round pick in 2020, just like Chase Young, just like Chase Young has fifth-year option declined. And yes, the you know the the the, the response is always going to be, well, there's got to be a reason. What was the reason? Well, 
I will tell you that it's not necessarily production. The linebacker set career highs in 2022 before having his option declined. And it's possible the Ravens only did so declined his option because they're already paying linebacker Roquan Smith record setting numbers. They're already paying quarterback Lamar Jackson top dollar. Uh, it's it's really kind of hard to justify paying a second linebacker near or or close to top dollar when you're already paying those types of premiums. Uh, Queen responded to the declining of his option this year by setting some new career highs, earning his first trip to the Pro Bowl and a spot as a second team All Pro uh, this season. So so Patrick Queen certainly making himself some money this season. Keep an eye out for him as the Baltimore Ravens host the Houston Texans, and that is. Baltimore Ravens linebacker, Mike McDonald's defense coordinator. I mean, that's an easy transition. Both of them just pack up a U-Haul, drive down the road a little bit, and you're at your new home uh, for the Washington Commanders. So, I mean, that's certainly a pairing that you could see happen. Because, again, we know, we always know coaches like to bring guys from their old team because they know them, they know who they work with, they know who worked for them, uh, and they know who knows the scheme. Patrick Queen uh, could not only come in, he's so young enough to make an impact. Obviously, he's talented enough to make an impact, but – also knows Mike McDonald, knows the scheme, knows the system, knows the language, could certainly be effective in helping his teammates. And, you know, look, you put him and Jamin Davis together in an odd front defense, who knows, maybe Jamin Davis even gets his career uh, fully back on track to where, uh, you know, they, they hoped he could be when he was drafted to Washington in the first place. Next game on Saturday, 8.15 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, Green Bay Packers visiting the San Francisco 49ers. That game is on Fox. And from the Packers side of this thing, I'm looking at cornerback Keyshawn Nixon and Kishan Nixon, Kishan Nixon, Kishan Nixon, Kishan Nixon, I think is the name, um, is someone who definitely made an impact on the game in the upset win over the Dallas Cowboys. Nixon is in his second season with the Green Bay Packers. He's earned two first-team All-Pro roster spots, both of them as return specialists. And we know, we know, we know the commanders need return specialist help, not just at cornerbacks, could certainly use cornerback help, but they definitely need that return specialist uh, ability. But he still has some ability as a cornerback as well. Against the Dallas Cowboys in the wild card round, Nixon didn't get any return opportunities, but he did lead the team in tackles with 11 of them and secured an interception as well. And then we're going to wrap up this segment of free agents. We're looking at the San Francisco 49ers. So which free agent from the San Francisco 49ers might we take a look at? We got to talk about Chase Young. We got to talk about San Francisco 49ers defensive end Chase Young because he is a name that has come up, uh, not in legitimate conversation room or anything like that, but in speculation, especially from parts of the fan base. Uh, look, Washington fans, you're obviously familiar with Chase Young, uh, appeared in 34 games over his first three and a half seasons in the NFL playing for Washington uh, since being traded to San Francisco. Young has gotten two opposing quarterbacks two and a half times. So he's got two and a half sacks while collecting a combined 10 tackles in nine games. Uh, Commanders fans, like I said, there have been some subtly so some subtle commanders wonderings happening in the fan base on whether or not Chase Young might return to Washington from San Francisco as a free agent. And, and that would be kind of a trip. Adam Peters. The assistant GM in San Francisco helps the 49ers trade a third round compensatory pick to the commanders for Chase Young this season. Next offseason, Adam Peters is the GM in Washington, signs Chase Young back over. Uh, so you have the player and you have the compensatory pick uh, that you got for him in the initial trade to begin with. That would be a trip. Uh, and, you know, look, personally, I don't think it's going to happen. I think I actually talked about this on a command huddle recently. Um, but we'll talk about it here on this episode. Personally, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think Chase Young as a free agent option. I don't. I just don't believe that Chase Young would want to return to the organization. Right? Still loves the DMV. Still from here. Still proud to be from here. All that stuff. I just don't think he would want to return to the organization. Now, you know, again, uh, you know, the coaches are gone. Right? Ron Rivera's gone. Jack Del Rio's gone. Uh, the front office. We'll see what that looks like. You know, completely. Josh Harris, you know, there's been some reports or some thoughts that Josh Harris kind of spearheaded uh, the trade of Chase Young. So if that's the case. And Josh Harris may not, you know, may kind of tell his guys, hey, look, I'm not interested in bringing Chase back anyway. So it's it's one of those things where we live in a never say never kind of world. So I'll not say never, but I don't see that being a real thing. And I'm not trying to squash any dreams from anybody out there who wants to see Chase Young back in Washington. I just don't see it happening. Um, but, you know, again, never say never. And he's obviously a free agent. He's obviously a big name. So we can talk about him. I just don't see it happening. So you're going to keep an eye on Chase Young when the Niners are on the field. See how he does against Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers. And we'll see what the future has in store. Those are the guys playing on Saturday. What about Sunday? That's coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.
Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and then watch your winnings roll in. Prize Picks is the most fun that I've had winning up to 25 times my money this season. And with basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports from different leagues. For example, LeBron James and Travis Kelsey at a 10 and a half combo of three pointers made and reception. Sounds interesting. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the promo code locked on NFL, all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. That code again, locked on NFL, all lowercase at pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL to get yourself a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Wrapping up this episode of Locked On Commanders, completing our divisional round preview of playoff free agents that could potentially become targets of the Washington Commanders. And some of them are players that kind of feel like pipe dreams with their guys that have expir- expiring contracts and you can't help but talk about them until they are re-signed and or franchise tagged by their franchise. We're starting off Sunday, Tampa Bay Buccaneers at Detroit Lions, 3 p.m. Eastern time. I will be on hand for that game to watch Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver Mike Evans get on the field with his Buccaneers teammates. And if they lose potentially for the last time, because he does have an expiring contract uh, and the Buccaneers and he and his agent were unable to strike a deal during the preseason, Mike Evans making it very clear he would not talk contracts during the season. So we'll see what happens after the season. And as we sit here today, guys, we are less than two months away from the start of the new league year. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers haven't even entered into any conversations with Mike Evans yet this offseason. And they're less than two months away from having to have a deal in place, franchise tag him or risk watching him walk away on a deal to someone else. And who better than the Washington Commanders? They got a whole bunch of money. They got some good, solid talent. They need some leadership. Let's bring in a guy who's got 10 straight seasons of a thousand yard receiving seasons. Most ever to start an NFL career, extending his own record. He beat Randy Moss's previous streak a couple years ago, and he just continues to build on it. He's matched Jerry Rice for the only uh, to only be the second NFL receiver to ever have 10 straight thousand yard receiving seasons. Uh, Rice's record is 11. Could see him set that record here in Washington. Look, I don't see the Buccaneers letting him get away, but until they do the right thing and pay this man and keep him where he should be, to be quite honest with you, um, we're going to talk about him. He's he's projected to be available, and until we get real wind that they're making real progress, because I'll tell you, man, the agent, Mike Evans and his agent, tried to come to the table with the Bucs and the Buccaneers. The report is the Buccaneers basically did not come to the table to talk turkey with Mike Evans. They still have a little bit of cap issue uh, that they're dealing with from their Super Bowl run. So, it's going to be really interesting. Evans is 31 in August, so this isn't, you know, you're not talking about a guy for the next 10, 12 years, something like that. But if you want to jumpstart your roster with a talented guy, get some leadership in the building, teach some guys how to do it the right way, how to be a professional, all these things, uh, Mike Evans is certainly a guy that could do it. And he brings something to this commander's receiving group that we don't have right now, which is downfield speed, yes, but the ability to body a guy, power forward, and you know, box him out, things like that. Um, also, on the other side of this, this matchup, Detroit Lions, we're looking at Josh Reynolds. Another receiver, a little bit younger, second year with Detroit this season, this year, 40 receptions, 40 receptions, 608 yards, receiving five touchdowns last weekend, had seven targets, five catches, 80 yards against the Los Angeles Rams. He's a younger uh, type of receiver that the Washington Commanders, again, certainly could look to, especially if Coach Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions, is the next Washington Commanders head coach. And for Ben Johnson, a quick little scouting report on what we're expecting to see from him and his offense against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a significant rise in under center snaps play action, play action effect has gone up. The play action usage has not gone up. The play action efficiency, as far as how many passes they complete out of play action has actually gone down. But while that play action percentage has gone down, their yards per attempt has gone up almost a full half yard uh, despite that dip in, in, in completion. So, again, that's yards per attempt, not yards per completion. So if your yards per attempt are going up while your completion percentage is going down, it means that, yes, you are completing fewer passes per play action attempt. But when you do hit them, you're hitting them for a much bigger chunk uh, than you were previously. And a lot of that is because they've dipped from their from using shotgun 65% of the time to 55% of the time. So they're under center 45% of the time. And play action is much more effective when you're doing it from under center. That is something that we will likely talk about more if Ben Johnson is indeed hired as the Detroit Lions 
head coach. So that's one game. The second game on Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, Kansas City Chiefs are on the road to visit the Buffalo Bills. That'll be aired on CBS. And for the Chiefs, we're looking at Chris Jones, defensive tackle extraordinaire. And this is another guy that you kind of look at and say, man, how do the Kansas City Chiefs let this dude get away? Well, he's playing on the franchise tag this season. That same franchise tag, if they tag him again, is projected to be $23.4 million. The Chiefs currently have $26.9 million projected in cap space. So they're not going to tag this guy. They've got to try to get a deal done with him. He kind of seems like he's just bound and determined and stubborn to get to free agency and try to get that new big time deal. He's a five time pro bowler, two time first team all pro. He does turn 30 in July, but if the Washington commanders end up trading Jonathan Allen, which again, we don't know where John sits right now. We don't know if you know where his, his dedication level is, all that stuff. But if they do end up trading Jonathan Allen, you go after Chris Jones, you pay him and you bring him on there to help anchor your defensive line. Dane Jackson, Buffalo Bills cornerback is on the other side of this, this, this comp- contest on Sunday night. It's his fourth year with Buffalo. Since coming into the league in 2020 as a seventh round pick, he's had 28 starts in those four years, three career interceptions, had one tackle against the Pittsburgh Steelers in the wild card round, but also had an 82.1 coverage grade according to PFF last weekend, which was the best among all Bills cornerbacks on the roster. Gave up two catches on seven targets, only 15 yards, did allow a touchdown, but still, again, 82.1 coverage grade last weekend against the Steelers. So keep an eye on Dane Jackson as the Kansas City Chiefs come to town. There. So that is our divisional round free agent look. Our look at Bobby Slowick versus Mike McDonald as they take on as two thirds of our top three coaching candidates. And then Ben Johnson, the top uh, offensive coach uh, candidate on this list, is in action as well. So, I mean, one of these three guys is very, very likely to be the next head coach for the Washington Commanders. And any of these free agents could potentially land in Washington next season. So, a lot of things to watch if you're a Washington Commanders fan, even though. The commanders themselves are not in action. Coming up on Monday, I am traveling to Detroit to cover the Buccaneers Lions divisional round playoff game. My plan right now is to record the Monday episode for this on Saturday night. Once I get to my in-laws house, we'll see how that unfolds. Um, Plan is right now is to drive back Monday. So I'm just going to, you're going to kind of have to play it by ear with me. We'll we'll definitely get some episodes out. We'll definitely get you your five episodes. Insiders, you already know, I'm going to be texting you, keeping you up to date as much as I can. Friday was crazy. Uh, Insiders know that uh, definitely. So again, if you want to get questions in, drop them in the YouTube comment section, text me directly, join subtext.com slash locked on commanders. Command huddle will be dropping on Saturday for you insiders. As always, thank you for making locked on commanders your first listen of the day every day. Thanks for coming through on a consistent basis like you do every day. Everybody, thanks so much for making me a part of your day, part of your football routine. Until we speak again, please be safe, be kind. See you next time for another episode of locked on commanders, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day.